What up, what up? Week four of the Launch League. We're back. It was uh, a rough week. Voice was cooked, but I'm happy to be back. And uh, who better to revive the Launch League episodes with other than Zach, the man, the myth, the legend over at Ocean State Fantasy Football. Before we kick things off, we all know your moms are in his DMs right now. So go over, shop wave and anchor.com and uh, get some of the fire is merch available. Zach, how are we doing tonight? I'm excellent, man. I'm fired up. That was that was honestly the best intro I've <laughs> I've heard all season. So I'm I'm amped up. Let's do this, man. Week four. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh basically what we're doing is we're getting you guys prepped for your week four matchups. Gonna give you some start and sit. We're gonna take a look at Zach's uh launch league lineup this week. Zach, you're sitting at the seventh out of 14 in the launch league. Not bad, not bad considering you had Dak go down early on in that IR spot. Taking a quick glance at your team this week, you got Wentz as the QB1, Patterson and Edmonds as the two running backs, Cooper Cup, Terry McLaurin as the wide receiver one and wide receiver two, Dawson Knox, Cortland Sutton, Travis Etienne, Young Hoku, and the Chargers defense up against the Texans. Talk me through your lineup this week. Who have you been surprised with this season pleasantly and who's kind of disappointed you so far you know so I'll, I'll start with the pleasant surprise which has been cordell patterson someone mm-hmm. i think i i was able to get later in the draft uh as far as what his value is right now it certainly has helped uh when you look at kind of the running backs unfortunately travis Etienne. i may have looking back in hindsight probably reached um so my running back position is a little rough but luckily i was able to get cooper cup so he's been really carrying the team um, the thing with Wentz, it's nice to have that stack. I'm a little nervous for this week, um, but he has been a, a great fill-in for Dak uh, while he's been out. Um, yeah, I, I mean, the uh, Dawson Knox has been a little iffy. I like Cortland Sutton in the flex. Tra- like We talked about Travis Etienne. It's kind of been a struggle with James Robinson being so uh, just in – I mean, I'm not sure if anybody predicted him to be as uh, prolific as he's been. Um, and then uh, Chargers defense – a little rough, and then my boy Young Way Koo. But yeah, it's kind of the rundown. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, as you said, James Robinson definitely, he's just defying the odds right now. I think, I don't think I've ever seen somebody come back from that caliber of an injury so quickly and perform at, you know, the levels that he is right now. I mean, that that is ridiculous. I mean, you got yourself a top 12 running back, and I don't, I don't even know which round, right? right. At, through through yeah. the first three, four weeks of football right now. So, um, just focusing a little bit more on ETM, are you kind of expecting his role to become a little bit bigger as the season goes on? Because credit to him, he's had a few really, really close opportunities at touchdowns this year that he has missed. Obviously, if you're an ETN owner, you know that. Um, are you comfortable with starting ETN even with the volume and production that James Robinson has been seeing? Yeah, I mean, it's he hasn't been like really killing you, uh, but he's certainly not returning the value, at least where I drafted him at the at the current moment. I, I will say I'm kind of treating this as his rookie season uh, with the fact he didn't play last year. Um, and on top of the fact that James Robinson playing so good, I think that, you know, you look at the game log real quick, you know, eight and a half, just about eight and a half, and then another ten and a half points. Uh, for the running back two, backing up a guy like James Robinson, that's not the worst thing in the world. Um, but I, I just kind of hope on the, my, I guess the saving grace would be him and Trevor Lawrence continue that college uh, connection they had over time throughout the season. Obviously, the Jaguars are certainly improved from last season. So you just kind of hope there's game scripts that come along where they play a tough run defense. And Travis Etienne, by default, just has to be more involved. And if he can kind of hover in that, you know, 55 percent snap share, I think you're going to like uh, the outcome. But. Until we get to that point, he's going to be, you know, a concerning player, uh, at least week in, week out. Yeah, and uh, the other interesting thing about the Jags this season has just been their overall team. I mean, you, you look at them, they've, they've exceeded expectations, I think. Last week especially, look at that game against the Chargers. Even though Herbert wasn't, you know, the healthiest guy in that game, you, you don't expect a 38-10 to 10 blowout in that, <laughs> in that game against the Chargers right. who were – you know, highly touted as a Super Bowl favorite this year. Uh, sure. Trevor Lawrence is also a guy who, you know, I got a lot of questions about this week. Me and Craze were kind of debating it on our post there. And uh, he's he's had a 
a fantastic start to the year. I mean, compared to what we saw last year, I mean, rounding it up, he had 10, 18, and 26 to start his three games this season. Um, are you looking at Lawrence as possibly a top 12 quarterback week in, week out, or is he more of a guy that you're going to stash on your bench and just play him when you got a bye week or something of a sort like that? Uh, Trevor Lawrence, um, man, I, it's that's exactly that's who we're that's who we're talking about here. I just want to make yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure, man. He's um, you have to like everything that you've seen so far. Anybody that's that waited and took him later on in drafts, you're certainly being rewarded right now with having a player, um, you know, being able to start off getting all your other skill positions and still being able to grab someone like Trevor Lawrence is certainly an advantage. Uh, but I like Trevor Lawrence week in and week out. If you're in my position, man, like I'm starting Carson Wentz, you know, right. so uh, I'd probably prefer uh, Trevor Lawrence in this situation. Um, so, yeah, for me, he's a week in, week out starter. Yeah, and, and especially with the way guys like Christian Kirk have been playing too, they, they've complete, he's completely elevated his game. I mean, beginning at the start of the season, you look at that paycheck that he got, people were kind of shocked by that, even myself, right? I don't think that – you can't be shocked. Like he broke, he broke the market, dude. He busted it. Right. But as of right now, as of right now, it's, it's definitely paying off. I think from the Jaguars perspective, I mean, I think still it, it may have been a little bit of an overpay. I mean, 17 mil per is <laughs> quite, quite the bag. I'm going to tell you that right now, but Christian Kurtz definitely he's rising to the occasion right now for a team that really needs um, some talent to explode on that team. So that way they can get this rebuild going. Um, now looking at the running backs, this is a big guy who obviously the backfield is just never healthy in San Francisco, right? I've talked with seven about this multiple times. Like they have to have the worst training staff in the NFL. I mean, these guys are never healthy. <laughs> you look at Raheem Moster, um, literally, literally the entire team is never, never healthy. Jeff Wilson He's come in to the San Francisco 49ers backfield, and he's taken over somewhat of a number one role. Uh, but he hasn't been fantastic. He's been mediocre. I mean, he's been decent. Uh, what are your thoughts on Jeff Wilson? Do you think that the production could be there, or is he kind of just maybe a flex play? Maybe he's on the bench. What are you viewing him as uh, this week and week four? Uh, I mean, just taking a look here, you're playing against the Los Angeles Rams. Um, so anytime you have a running back against the Rams, I'm not sure you can feel that confident just off the rip, no matter who it is. Um, but I obviously love Jeff Wilson's for my own personal reasons. Uh, but I do believe that, you know, he's it, in this, we started off the season. So unsure with these, you know, I, I think you right. can do a lot worse than a guy like Jeff Wilson in a pinch. If he's your RB two, or if, you know, maybe he's a low end flex. Um, I think you have to be nervous about the matchup. But if you look at it after that, you know, at Carolina, at Atlanta, Kansas City, you know, those are some pretty decent to somewhat favorable matchups. Uh, so as as long as he's the RB1 for San Francisco, uh, he has a valuable position in fantasy. Right, right. And and after last week, I think San Francisco really needs to rely on some other guys other than Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, we saw a perfect impersonation of Darylowski around like 10, 15 years <laughs> uh, earlier. So I think I think there obviously needs to be some some help over over in San Francisco. Uh, speaking of a team that you know has had a really good start to the season. I mean, Thursday night wasn't the uh, the best showing of that, but it's your team, Zach, the Dolphins. Let's just take a look at the Dolphins team overall. I mean, obviously, Tua goes down with a scary injury for Dolphins fans. Um, how, are, how are you valuing that offense now that Tua, you know, went down with that injury? Are you looking at the receivers as any less of production at this point? Or is the offense going to stay, stay kind of at the same value, do you think, without Tua? Yeah, I mean, regardless how you feel about, about Tua as, as a player, um, obviously, we all – want him to get better ASAP and and as as a fan and someone who's heavily invested into a in fantasy this year I'm conflicted obviously I want to see him play but overall I want to see him healthy uh but at the same time you look what happens when Teddy Bridgewater comes in the game and he as as great of a backup as he can be comparative to other backups in the league he for sure lost right. us that game with those interceptions um I love that he has that you know D gaff kind of mentality right and he has the arm maybe that two a dozen as far as launching it down the field you saw that play with Tyreek Hill mm -hmm. I mean if you had Tyreek Hill up into that point fantasy you were a little upset uh so you see what Teddy Bridgewater is capable of so as far as the wide receivers and the other skill positions going forward obviously two it will not be playing this week uh, I'd be surprised if you see him 
uh, any sooner than three weeks um, on the sidelines for sure. Right. A- after all the shenanigans, them firing the um, the third party uh, medical consultant. Uh, so I think you know Tyreek Hill is is probably a couple of notches down from where he normally is week in and week out. I think Teddy Bridgewater is going to find himself in game scripts where we're playing from behind uh, or, you know, needing to still continue to pass the ball. We're not going to be getting ahead where we're just going to run the ball nonstop. So uh, in PPR leagues, Waddle and, and Tyreek Hill are still going to be valuable, but I think you have to ultimately lower their ceilings uh, all across the board uh, for all skill position players while Bridgewater is the quarterback. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and the thing, the thing for Tua too is just a fantastic, fantastic start to the season. I mean, there was a lot. And I think you are one of the only people in the world who was believing in Tua before the season started. Um, and then he comes out and he posts that six touchdown performance. And even before that, he's just playing fantastic. So. Um, are, are you a big believer in giving Tua that contract that he deserves if he continues, you know, playing the way he does when he gets back healthy? Uh, yeah. And, and the, you, you, even if you look at all the aspects of, of Tua, he has what it takes to be a, a franchise quarterback, uh, in the NFL, just what he's shown through the three weeks so far and what he was showing in this game. Uh, I think Tua stays in that game Thursday night. We were four and oh, and I'll, a lot of people, including Vegas, had us losing that game uh, as a as a quote unquote letdown game. And the only reason we lost was because Teddy Bridgewater was a quarterback. So, yeah, I ultimately believe that Tua is that guy, the quote unquote. He's that dude. I think he can lead a franchise um, to a Super Bowl. I think it it it's going to have to consist of him continuously playing at this level. Um, but it, you see what happens when you just get the ball in uh, Tyreek Hill's hand, Jalen Waddle's hands. Just put an offensive lineman around him, give him some better pieces, and this is the result. And I've been saying this since I've been, you know, till I'm blue in the face. Uh, but actually seeing it happen was special. Um, so obviously that makes this injury a little more devastating uh, than the average fan, you know. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Um, well, Zach, that is uh, that's pretty much a wrap for this week. Of course, if you guys have any other start sit questions, you guys want to send our way. DMs are always open. Instagram posts pretty much daily uh, on the Fantasy Football Network. So please feel free to hit us up there. Zach, thank you very much for coming on tonight. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. This is a blast. I'm excited. Let's go. Week four. Um, I got to get up into that like top five spot. You know, I got to get out of that seven place. I want to make sure yeah. I, I lock in a playoff spot. <laughs> hey, it's a hard place to get stuck in, but uh, chances are, chances are you get improved. You're doing better than me right now. So, you know, I, <laughs> I, I got to be the one complaining here. All right. <laughs> Thank you guys, of course, for coming on tonight, um, watching through. If you guys got any questions, again, please feel free to contact me on Instagram, on the Fantasy Football Network, and we'll catch you in week five for the launch league. All right. Peace out, guys. Yes, sir.